No, the thing was, get the hell out. Get out of here, because you, if you stay with the plane, you're going to, going to get the biscuit. So, in the Lancaster, there's a place where the navigator can stand in the window. So I put my chute on and jumped out, because the plane was going down, noise me, noise me hanging around. And Did floated down. Oh yeah, bailouts. Because he knew that, he knew that, I think, and see the plane crashed. And as I was going down, I could see where it crashed, and the other, all the other people in the plane were killed. None of them could get out. The pilot couldn't get out. The bomb aimer couldn't get out. The gunners couldn't get out. But I jumped out the window and floated down. Oh, it took quite a while. We were up quite high. I would say about 25 minutes. You float down slowly. There was a, so I could see a lake, and I didn't want to land on the lake, so I kind of steered away from that. But, um, other than that, and I, the other thing I was a bit concerned about was hydro wires. You wouldn't want to land on hydro wires or on a highway or on a railway track. So I was kind of looking around to make sure I did. I would prefer landing in trees or in a field. So you kind of guide yourself there. But of course it's one o'clock in the morning, you can't see too much, but I could see that lake and I wanted to steer away from that. Because if you land on the lake, you're kind of, with a parachute, it's a bit dicey. But I landed on land. And, well, these guys that were, I guess they saw the plane flying over and they saw the bears. They took me to, and they put me in this guy's house. It was two o'clock in the morning. And he was a very nice chap. He could speak English and he was very nice to me. And I stayed there all night. And then they came the next morning and took me and took me and put me in jail. And from there they went to, took me into prison camp. I can't remember too much, but just or, or not, nothing dra dramatic, just an ordinary camp with bunks and things like that. But but you know you're you're uh, you're in in a in a jail situation where you're not you're not going to get out too easily. And they before you know, and back in England they say now when you when you get captured you're supposed to try and make an escape. And I said to myself, well, I'm not in an escape mood. I'm going to stay, stay where I'm safe. <laughs> so I stayed in the camp. But I guess I could have tried to escape and caused some havoc. Maybe I should have, I don't know. Yeah, some of them did, yeah. Some of them ran into trouble. Some of them get killed. Yeah, so one guy got back to England. It was possible. It was dangerous, though. And it was it was dicey to you know you're in a foreign land you don't speak the language you're dis disgruntled or dis disheveled and on top of that you're hungry so you know you you've got to think of your own well-being and it, it, they say you, you should try to escape but then you got to think well. Got to take your own self into consideration to a certain degree, which I did. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Walk around, talk. T tell the other guys of your adventures. Very boring. Very boring being. Being in jail is boring. Yeah, none of you guys have ever been in jail, I don't think. <laughs> well, the food wasn't. That great, really. It's rather meager, but it's, we survived on it. We didn't get fat on it, but we didn't we didn't go downhill. Like, yeah, they used to have some base, uh, baseball games and things like that. Yeah, I think they were. Yeah, we, we were we weren't uh, allowed to uh, fraternize too much because they kept us more or less segregated. But I, I think the camp contained Americans and. Canadians and all the rest, yeah, I think. Well, some of the establishment camps did very well at that, yeah. They put on plays and, and um, you know, to, to keep busy. But in the camp I was in, more or less a transient camp, so we were here today and gone tomorrow, so to speak. But some of the older camps, they, they did a lot of that, yeah. I guess they, if they didn't do, they'd become very bored. But we were more or less move, moving constantly so 
we wouldn't have much time for too much of that type of activity. Here, I'll just put away my German grammar book. Beautiful language. What's on your minds? Sir, we have an escape plan. We want your approval. It's absolutely foolproof. There's not a chance it can fail. It's 100% perfect in every respect. Can't miss. It may even work. <laughs> of course it will work if it's properly executed. Executed. <laughs> executed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, I'm not in favor of escape attempts at this time. Well, you must be kidding. With his usual brilliant efficiency, Colonel Clink is electrifying the wire. I can short out the wire. <laughs> then we put a ladder up against it and go over any dark night. And we're away. Yeah. <laughs> to show the lousy crowds. Corporal, I wish you wouldn't use that language. And why not, may I ask? They are pigs, animals, brutes, the lowest form of life on earth. Sure, but how do you really feel about it? <laughs> I mean, deep down, don't you have a sneaking admiration for the way they conduct themselves? There's a very good chance they're going to win the war. Never thought I'd hear you talk like that, sir. Colonel, are you going soft on the crowds? Let's just say that I'm being realistic. Oh, Levo. I brought you your plate back. Okay, Schultz. Oh, it was delicious. But you know what happened? Clink saw me eat the strudel. Oh, he almost killed me. Oh, he's a devil. <laughs> <laughs> He's a devil, all right, but the most lovable devil in Germany today. Oh, you saw me eat the strudel, but you know what he did? He canceled my next leave, but he was absolutely right. I deserve it. Oh, Commandant Link is like a father to me. Well, I'll see you later. Obey the rules, or I have to do my duty. And report you! <laughs> Colonel, what about our escape plan? I'll think it over, but don't get your hopes too high. Oh, oh, let's see. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. All right. All right. dismissed. Oh, come on, well, I never thought it really. <laughs> yes, your general, a definite pro German attitude. He even refuses an escape plan. Just the, I didn't get the DFC or anything like that, no. Or the Distinguished Flying Service Corps. No, I got no big medal, but I got the regular medals. Yeah, I think they're around something. I don't worry. I'm not, I'm not a big medal man. Now, maybe if I had got one of the big medals, I would have been. <laughs> well, General, General Patton, Liberators, yeah, they took us back very quickly. Uh, I, I, I think they made a special effort to get the, the POWs on their way. And then once we got to England, we got to Guatemala and got you know, back to our usual way of life, then we sent it back to Canada. They, they seemed to have it well organized. There, there wasn't much waiting around. Oh, I kind of forget. Um, I, think the, I, I think the war was still on. I, I can't remember. But it was shortly, shortly after we were liberated, we, we arrived back in Canada. I, I didn't notice any big uh, difference, but I, I guess that should have been a thrill to get, to get back home. Of course, Canada, after traveling in Europe and those places, you can see that Canada is a, is a great place, so it's always, always nice to get back, <laughs> back home. He was in the first special service force, and that was a force set up by Churchill to do away with the f those heavy water plants in Norway. And they, they trained, um, it was a combined American-Canadian force. And they trained in um, Montana and uh, in uh, part of Canada. But by the time they got well trained, th those uh, heavy water plants were, were gone anyway. So, but they, 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 they still carried on as the first special service force. And I said, where the hell were you? <laughs> <laughs> well, kind of thrilling, really. A bit emotional. But it was nice to be home. Nice to be back. 
back in, as we say, back in the saddle. <laughs> well, well, not really. I had, I had several girls <laughs> I knew, <laughs> but I wouldn't, I wouldn't call them girlfriends, no. It was a letdown. Because, you know, when you're traveling around like that in the way I was, it's, to get back to normal living is a kind of a letdown, really. But you get used to it. It's the way it is. Some of those experiences I had weren't going to go on forever, that's for sure. So you get back into normal life very quickly, I thought. Did you? Then I went to school. I went to law school in, in Toronto here. And uh, gradually you, you forget those experiences. But as you get older, they, they start to reoccur. And you think about, well, at the time you don't think about them, they're, they're, they're the past. But then as you get older, they, they become part of you. Sweet. You think about them, whereas at the time you're, you're too busy getting back into the flow and doing things. Whereas, as you get older, you cool down a bit. And you think about mm. so I was at law school. I, I, I really made a mistake. I should have gone to university first and then gone to law school, but I went right into law school. And at law school, I kind of liked it. It was kind of very interesting. But there was a guy there, one of the professors, for Alaska. Heard of him? He was one of the lecturers, and he he later became chief justice for Canada. And I said to myself, "What the hell am I doing here? Listen to that guy, but I don't know what the hell he's talking about." <laughs> so I got the hell out of law school. <laughs> but I can see I, I can see I was kind of rushing things. I should have cooled down a bit and started started a bit a bit earlier. Okay. Yeah. And oh yeah. They they were very the government was very very good to us as far as uh, benefits. They provided with, with uh, tuition and then so much money a month to, uh, as long as we continue the courses. Oh, the extremely, extreme, the government did an extremely good job. I started to work for um, Blue Cross and at that time they were just starting to get into health care. And, it went, went, and as you know, Blue Cross eventually became the basis of our present health plan. And that's, that's how I ended up in, in OHIP. Mm -hmm. And I had an I we had a district office and I had an office in, in Kitchener, I lived in Kitchener. And I, I kind of liked the work, it was very interesting, you met a lot of, we, we, we dealt with all the firms and I found it very interesting. And I had uh, some, I forget how many kids I had. Lost count. I think I had five kids. <laughs> five or six. <laughs> yeah, my daughter lives in Etobicoke. My son lives in Ottawa. My daughter lives in Ottawa too. One of my boys died here a while back. Yeah, I had five children, I think. Yeah, one died, yeah. In Unionville. Did you ever hear of Unionville? Yeah, we lived there. I like, we had a house in Unionville. And at uh, that, that time, I worked for OHIP. And I liked Unionville. Did you, are you familiar with Unionville? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. very sure. nice place. Just, just off Highway Seven near uh, near Markham. Yeah. No, seen the same. Hadn't changed. Canada's a great. When you travel in foreign countries, you realize what a wonderful place Canada <laughs> is, and how fortunate we are to live here. Because we have so much freedom, and we do what we want. We go to other countries, and you see how restricted they are, and and how I, I won't say backward, but they're they're not going ahead like Canada is. So kind of like Canada, well, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So what do we next? Remember that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, make me very sad. I never go to the services here. It's too it's too emotional. Because all I can think about are those guys that I flew with that are that died. But I guess we have to have Remembrance Day. But they're, they're sad. Remembrance Days are sad days, really. Because they, they bring back memories of people you, you knew so intimately and worked with and played with and they're gone. 
But I guess we have to have Remembrance Days. They're part of our structure. I never go down to the service here. I give it to me by myself. Okay. In my little room with my airplane pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Spitfire is a great airplane, you know. I think it's one of the best. Oh, of course, the Lancaster was. There's no comparison between a Spitfire and a Lancaster, but <laughs> I, I like the Lancaster. It was it's a great airplane. Yeah. Spitfire was too, of course. Never, never thought about them. <laughs> All I thought about was the war. <laughs> Flying, not getting shot down, and then becoming a prisoner. I was a prisoner of war. But I, I never thought of the Nazis. As far as I could see, the German people were very, very friendly. This guy that they put me in his house in Germany, in Germany, very nice fella, very friendly guy. His wife had spent seven years in Detroit working in the Ford Motor Factory. And uh, so he was quite familiar with America. Very nice fella. Sometimes, it's a long time ago though. We, we, we've moved on since then, you know, got on to other things. But great, sometimes, you know, when I'm here by myself, I think about it. In the prison camp, we, they, they put us on a march. From, uh, we were near Munich. And we walked south. And we came to, um, a place, I forget where it was. And I was on this field this day, and this big tank came over the field. And in the tank was General Patton, the American general. And I knew then that once I saw that, that the war was, that was, you know, the war was ending because once the Americans got in, the show was over. Because the, Amer the Americans, you know, they come in with such, such force, such, such, such plenty of everything. Those Americans, they, they had everything, they had food and everything. They, 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 I used to go into their kitchen and they, they'd have bread and biscuits and I'd say to the guy, can I have one? He said, sure, help yourself, take the whole works. Because they had no end of stuff. The Americans, you know, they all, no end of supplies. And When the Americans go to war, they go to war in a big way. They spare nothing. <laughs> 